Well, good morning. How are you? Oh, man. Y'all got to get more energy than that this morning because I need to feed off of it, okay? Uh, no, hey, uh, we're here this morning, and, and I want you to know that you were here this morning because God planned for you to be here this morning. You're not here just because you got out of bed and said, I'm going to go to church today. Guys, you're here because God has something special for you today, okay? He's ordained for you to be here for such a time as this, okay? So this morning, prepare your hearts, and let's get ready for what God has for us. Uh, let's open this morning in prayer. Father God, we come to you, Lord. We just thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. Father, we thank you that we get the chance this morning to worship you. You are an amazing God, and we love you so much, Father. And we are so grateful for the love that you have for us. Lord, this morning, just pour out in this place. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Come and fill us this morning. Lord, we just thank you, and we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. We want to welcome you if you're visiting with us this morning. We, we, want, to, we want to say thank you for being here. We're glad you're here. Uh, if you are family and you are here every Sunday, we want to say thank you for being here too because we love you. All right? Uh, at this time, we're going to get up and greet each other and shake hands. Give somebody a holy hug this morning. All right? morning there. Let me invite you to make your way back to your seat. We invite you to make your way back to your seat. We got a few announcements for you. Um, first of all, we just want to remind you of our ongoing kind of fundraisers that we're doing. We've got the, uh, the envelope fundraiser for the kids. You pick an envelope that corresponds with the amount that you want to give. You put your money in there. You can put your check in, in without it or with or without, and you drop that in the offering box. Uh, on the back, um, and that, that works just fine. Uh, just so you know, this is also a time when you can do your offering. You can text 77977. You text VV Naz to that number, 77977, to be given a link to give, or you can do it through the app, or you can just drop cash or check, however you want, straight into the box uh, in the back of the room. Um, there's also, so uh, the teens, we're supposed to have a fundraiser uh, car wash, like uh, a week ago, but it was really cold. Um, I think it's supposed to be around 80 or a little, maybe 85 next Saturday. So don't clean your cars yet. Go just a little bit longer. You know you have cars and you know that they're dirty. So just bring them here and let your teens clean them. And then, you know, you normally pay 50, 60, 80 dollars to get your car washed. So you might as well just do that here. 
um, any, any donation is accepted and appreciated for that. So then uh, finally, I just want to remind you, the same day, Saturday the 6th, as the car wash, before that, that's the car wash is 1 to 5, so before that is the men's BYOB, bring your own breakfast. That's at 8.30, and it's going to be back in the phase 2 room. So uh, men's, men's, get together with your breakfast. I guess you can make it and bring it, uh, or you can buy it and bring it. I don't know. Um, maybe David will cook some eggs here or something. But uh, anyway, uh, bring your breakfast, and then uh, we'll, we'll enjoy that time together. So uh, with all of that said, I believe our announcements are over, uh, and we can begin to prepare ourselves for worship um, Go ahead and just stand, and, and I just want to invite you to be open to uh, whatever the Lord might say to you, whatever he might reveal to you this morning. Be open for that.
morning to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? We all please bow your heads and pray with me as Pastor Gavin prepares to come. Father, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the work that is so well done that is complete. Father, I pray you prepare our hearts this morning for the message that Gavin has for us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. Come and fill us. Father, I pray that we are changed people when we leave here this morning. Change like only you can do. Father, we thank you. Lord, I pray for your anointing to be with Gavin this morning and just that your spirit flows through you. It's in your precious name we pray. Happy uh, fourth Sunday of Easter. I know you're keeping track, so I'm going to keep that going. We're still in the spirit of Easter and spirit of the resurrection and attempting to find our identity and our purpose and our vision and in everything that makes up who we are, finding that in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So as a part of uh, doing that today, I just want to speak about um, knowing uh, the voice of the shepherd. Um, if, if Jesus is the good shepherd, then we ought to know his voice. And, and I, don't know, I don't know if anyone out here even owns sheep uh, or many sheep. But um, I think one that many of us have, an animal that many of us have in our house, is probably a dog. I mean, do we have any dog owners out there? Yeah, and cats, and cats, yeah, but you can't hurt, you can't hurt a cat. The cats, I mean, cats do whatever they want, and then they hate you for it secretly, plotting your death while you sleep. But uh, dogs, on the other hand, dogs can, like, listen and obey. I'm teasing about cats, but uh, dogs listen, and, and sometimes they obey. And I was actually telling the, the teens this morning about a time when my dog wasn't obeying, and I gave it a swat on the butt, and I got yelled at by a neighbor lady. Um, she didn't, she's not my neighbor. I was walking the dog. She doesn't know who I am. Um, she'd be like, don't go to that church. That pastor spanks his dog. Um, it wasn't hard. He, he, uh, he told me sorry afterwards. But the, the issue is that sometimes uh, the animals that we have, and usually dogs, right, they don't listen necessarily to what we say. Um, and, and so it's hard um, to know how to deal with this. In my house, uh, this same dog is a counter surfer. Um, so this means that he likes to see what's up on the counter and then uh, takes it. Uh, he also, we have find lots of... Y socks that have been through a digestive cycle in the in the yard because uh, he steals mainly I think mainly Macy's socks he steals and runs off with them outside and um, there is a difference however between my voice and Jill's voice so um, his name is Odin when Odin's up on the counter she'll say Odin get down and he just stays and I say Odin down and he goes down uh, so he knows who the shepherd is, at least in our house. I'm not trying to say the boss. I'm not trying to say the boss. I'm just trying to say, um, you know, I'm just trying to say uh, the shepherd uh, anyway. But um, there's a golden retriever in the neighborhood here in City View uh, that the guy doesn't ever use a leash. Um, I, every once in a while, I mistake him for Wes. Uh, I just feel like he looks exactly like Wes uh, Miller. And uh, he's walking his golden retriever, and, and that dog stays right with him. It doesn't matter if my dog is going crazy and insane and jumping on the leash. And, and I'm like, uh, and his dog just stays right there. And I asked him one day uh, when I was walking back from the church, he was, had been walking his dog back here behind the church. And, and I asked him, I said, how do you do that? He said, well, uh, what you don't know is I have a shock collar on this thing and I got the remote in my pocket. <laughs> so it made me feel a little bit better about uh, my dog not minding me so well and, 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 and his doing so much better. But the truth is, there is, um, it is important that we recognize the voice of our Lord and Savior and that we're able to follow him wherever he leads us and guides us. And um, it's, it can be hard to discern his voice from all the voices out there. And, and, and so because we're talking about sheep and a shepherd, I do have a couple videos. Sheep are not known for being really smart or really caring animals. But I do have a couple videos you've probably seen on social media. Let's just go with the first one. I don't remember which one is first up there. Just 
show that one real quick. Oh yeah, you've seen this one, right? This one's got some fun music playing. So get the sheep out. You know what's gonna happen, right? Yes. Boom. That's a that's we're not listening, right? So then there's another one. It's a little little bit longer. We don't have to do the whole thing, but. Oh, this music's fun too. Yeah. Did you know that she would do this? Yeah, so here's us. He's gonna come save her. Yeah. Yeah, we can stop it there. I think it's kind of wild still. Yeah, it goes on for a little bit longer. I had actually cut that down from like four minutes of this sheep mercil- mercilessly attacking people. And then they're laying on the ground like, oh man, I just got nailed by this sheep. And boom, it hits them again. So I don't, you know, I don't know if that tells you anything, but, but except for sheep are not known to be smart animals and they're not known to be necessarily that caring or kind of animals. And this is why sheep need shepherds. I don't know if Jesus was trying to say anything to us by the, by the fact that he called us sheep, uh, but certainly he meant to say something to us by the fact that he said, I, I'm the good shepherd, okay? Let me get us to our uh, big idea for the day, and then we'll read our scripture just after that. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is one of overwhelming grace and tremendous responsibility. By grace, Christ Jesus has taken on the great responsibility of shepherding the church, The church must simply know his voice and follow his leading. Man, I don't have to make the decisions. I don't have to, I don't have to develop uh, the, the plan. I have to, what do I have to do? I have to know his voice when he's speaking and I have to follow wherever that voice is telling me to go or what that voice is telling me to do. And again, that can be hard because we have lots of distractions um, in our midst, but uh, we're going to keep that in mind as our big idea for today. Um, no, I'm not telling you about listening to your pastor better this morning or listening to what your pastor has to say. This is about uh, your, your, your heavenly responsibility, right? You're that relationship with our Lord and Savior. So let's look at what uh, our text says for today. It's John 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the door, or opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And this is the word of God for the people of God this morning. Um, Yeah, sheep are are silly creatures to us today. Um, We reference those with those uh, videos, which you may or may not have seen. And actually, that one with the sheep jumping in is like one of six videos like that that I saw. So I just want to let you know, that's not like a random occurrence. They do that. Uh, They don't know... Uh, what's good for them. Um, There's also kind of another connotation that's risen uh, lately with sheep. We call people sheep in like a negative way. This is mostly like on social media, right? And they say, don't be, don't be one of the sheep or don't be one of the sheeple, right? Because uh, this is the truth and you guys don't know it or whatever. It's kind of usually a conspiracy theory kind of phrase, but we see that on social media as well. Um, and, and whatever connotations we might have, I, I'm not sure that people were usually, um, I'm not sure that before this time that, that sheep was, um, calling people sheep was always kind of a metaphor used. Um, maybe, I didn't, I didn't check into that. I'm not sure if it was used in the Old Testament at all. Um, I know that um, there's a passage in scripture where it said Jesus has compa- had compassion on the crowd because they were like a sheep with no shepherd. 
um, the sheep were, were, were more of a commodity, right? So there, there's milk uh, that you can get from sheep, uh, wool, meat, and uh, these things provided security in Jesus' time. Um, they, they provide profit today. Um, and again, I don't know if anyone's ever raised sheep or had a herd of sheep, uh, but you can imagine that in, in the same sense that, that you would be able to make a living off of that today, um, it w- would have been a sign of security. I know that um, my mom used to talk about having a goat uh, when she was a girl, and this, she loved the goat a lot. And uh, they used to milk this goat, and then one day, um, one day there was no more goat, and she was heartbroken. <laughs> but I do remember her talking about, oh, yeah, because uh, I started raising goats while we were in Congo. And she said, oh, man, I remember. And she told me all about this goat she used to have. Um, unfortunately, sheep weren't even pets back then as well. They were really about security and, and um, uh, a sense of livelihood for your family. So if you had a couple, two, three sheep, um, or if you had 20 or 30 or, or more sheep, um, that was a, a, a way for you to survive, a way for you to get by. Um, they were also, for this reason, they were a major sign and symbol of wealth, right? Because the more sheep you have, the more excess you have. And if you have a big group, it's like, oh, yeah, um, look, look how rich I am. You can count my sheep. Um, the word that's used in the Bible sometimes, it talks about um, the, the Lord owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That's a really, um, it's a really uh, kind of broad word. When we mean cattle, when we say cattle, we're talking about cows, right? Uh, but back in Bible times, probably when they said that the Lord owns the cattle on a thousand hills, they're probably talking about sheep. I mean, it's just kind of a general word, kind of more like livestock or something. So um, uh, the more you had, the wealthier you were. And that would be true today as well. Uh, but Jesus presents himself as this new kind of shepherd. Um, this is a direct challenge to the Pharisees who saw themselves as shepherds uh, in the manner of Moses, David, and others. So these Pharisees um, really saw it to be their job to care for the people. They didn't officially have this job from God. It wasn't like God appointed them in that way, but that's how they saw themselves. And so when they uh, understood their job as shepherds, the Pharisees, when they understood this, they thought, okay, we need to keep the rules, right? We need to make sure no one breaks the rules. And then some of the big rules then are going to be Sabbath, right? Keeping Sabbath. Um, it's also going to be about some ritual washing and cleansing that we do. And, and you know the finances are going to be in there, right? So the finances are going to be a part of that. And, and they really saw themselves as the ones who were, um, who were in charge of Israel and charge of these sheep and were kind of this class risen above them. But they used it in a way to gain power. And how they did this was they would say, well, this leader has this many sh- sheep, this many followers. Therefore, he's the best follower, right? If this one has 1,000 followers and this one has 100 followers, we'd say, ooh, 1,000. He's the better teacher because he has a bigger following, right? So they used it as a way. Um, they tried to gather as many people they, can, they could to their, to their schools or to their sects or to their different um, Uh, just uh, groups of leaders, and that would be how they could show how powerful they were, right? Because I have all these people behind me. Unfortunately, I'm already thinking about some some pastors who act that way, right? I've got a big church, therefore I'm this powerful of a person, and you should listen to what I say and do what I say, um, you know, across the the realm of of subjects and concepts, not just um, as far as church goes. And so we see that happening even today, but there was this idea that I need more sheep because it would make me powerful. Um, For the Pharisees, sheep weren't merely pets or sources of sustainability to a family. They were a means to gain power through influence, right? I've got all these people listening to me, all these people pushing for for me and vying for me. and, 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 you know, one, again, one thing from The Chosen, if you've watched that series at all, uh, one thing you pick up from the chosen is is just some of that behind the scenes kind of stuff that could have been taking place, and uh, you see some some of this complaining about Jesus to this group and going to that group and all the different things they were up to. It's probably characteristic of how it was, uh, but certainly you get a good idea of the fact that people are trying to gain power through their followers. And you can think about it even today. Let's say I wanted to proclaim myself the king of the Panhandle. I decide I'm the king of the Panhandle. 
and, and, and all these uh, lands, these vast lands of the panhandle, I just de- declare myself king. Well, if nobody, nobody follows me, if nobody thinks I'm their king, I'm not really the king of the panhandle, you know? I could say that, but I, I wouldn't be. Um, but at the same time, if I was like, yeah, I'm the king of the panhandle, and everyone was like, yes, you are. You know, have, have, uh, have taxes or something, you know? I would be like, yeah, I'm the king. And you guys would be like, yeah, he is. Yeah, he, that's the king. And you would give me responsibility and I'd be in charge, right? But um, um, this is kind of the way that it was. Without a direct uh, line of kingship, um, and, and Herod was kind of a strange example of that. He wasn't really uh, a direct, in the direct lineage. Um, without that, uh, the, the unbroken line of, of the chief priests, which they had, but again, it was kind of set up real quick and, and just kind of in this strange way. They didn't have their same systems that they had uh, back long ago, uh, before exile. And so uh, really... Um, there was a lot of question about who's in charge and, and what should these leaders do? What should these leaders be, be involved in? So you can imagine having a completely different religious set of leaders that were supposed to be for the whole country as well as a completely separate political set of leaders for the whole country. And, and what does that mean? What does that look like? There's a lot of confusion. So how did people try to state their, their, their place how did they try to stake, uh, stake their claim that they were important or they were in charge? It was through sheep. I've gone a long, a long time on this, but what I want you to understand is these shepherds that we have examples of in the New Testament, these shepherds were not looking after the sheep. These shepherds were trying to gain power through their sheep, and there's a big difference. So Jesus comes, and he says a few things, and he kind of lists some qualities of a shepherd, but, um, well, let, let me get into those, and then we'll... Uh, We'll go from there. Um, So the first quality that Jesus presents is that he is a shepherd that comes in through the gate, right? He's not one that came in through the side, that climbed over or or snuck in some way. He's the one who the gatekeeper has let them in, and they have no need of sneaking around. He's known. And so if we think about this in the spiritual sense, Jesus is, is the one who's known to the gatekeeper. He comes in through the gate. He's the one appointed by God to lead these people. That's his job. That's what he does. There's no question of, well, is he powerful enough? Does he have the leadership qualities? Does he have enough of a following? No, none of that is, matters. What matters is he came in through the gate, right? He came in through the gate. He's known to the gatekeeper. Um, his voice is known to the sheep, So the one whose voice is known to the sheep. So we know that Jesus is a good shepherd because when he speaks, the sheep follow him. He didn't have to smack him on the rear. He didn't have to beat him with a stick. Uh, We we talked with the teens this morning about Balaam and his donkey. And if you don't remember that story, it's a great story. But he beats his donkey so much, the donkey starts saying, Hey man, uh, why are you beating me? I'm trying to save your life. You go back to Numbers 22 if you want to check into that. It was a text that I had prepared to add into this and just... I don't want to preach to you for an hour today, so I took it out. And the whole congregation said amen. But uh, they they know his voice. They do what he says. Not because uh, Jesus will beat me up if I don't. Not because God will take his thumb and squash me if I don't do what God says. But because I know his voice. Because I hear him when he calls and I respond. That makes him the shepherd. That's interesting. So it's almost like I'm not a dog owner. If my dog runs out the back gate into the alley and I say, Odin, come, and he looks at me like, yeah, I'll be right back, and he leaves. That means I'm not an owner in this, in this uh, set of criteria here that Jesus, has the, Jesus gives as the qualities of a shepherd. So his voice is known. They know when he's talking. They know when they should follow. They know when they should stay, when they should go. Um, ultimately, Uh, this is a quality of the leader that we're talking about, not necessarily a quality of the sheep. There is a side of the sheep we want to make sure that we respond, but he's really talking about the leader. He's talking about the shepherd, right? Um, I know we've got teachers in the room, and you're going to disagree with me about this. Uh, I I do some teaching as well. Uh, But um, if you have a class, let's say you have a class of 30 students, and uh, 20 five of your students fail a test, 
I'm just going to step out on a limb here, teachers, forgive me. I'm going to step out on a limb and say if 25 students of 30 fail a test, it may have been that they were not well prepared for that test. Might be a problem with a teacher. Probably not any of our teachers, but it might be a problem with the teacher if that happens. So if, you might say that if, am I trying to say then if, if we don't listen to God's voice, if we don't listen to the leading and guiding of our shepherd, Jesus, is it a problem with the teacher? Or is it a problem with the sheep? Jesus says, it, the conventional wisdom is that it's the sheep. But Jesus says, they follow me. That's how, they, that's how you know I'm the good shepherd, is that they follow me. Anyway, controversy for the day. Uh, third quality that Jesus gives is that the shepherd is the one who cares for the sheep. He doesn't use them for power or for gain. He doesn't use the sheep for what he can get out of them, but he actually cares for them. He's the one that, that, that worries when the sheep are, are unhappy. The one who tends to them and, and makes sure they have a place to eat and a place to get water and and, and when they're struggling, with, when now we go to the, the human side of this, when they're struggling, the shepherd is, is there listening to the struggles, being with them and uh, encouraging them. Sorry, I don't know if that was moving or maybe it is. is it, anyway, sorry, it's, it's like I'm cutting in and out a lot. All right, make an executive decision. I'm switching to this. Okay. There we go. So, um, so the shepherd is the one who comes in through the gate. That means they're led in by the gatekeeper. The shepherd is the one whose voice is known to the sheep. Uh, they, they listen and they follow and they respond. Um, and then the owner uh, is, or uh, the, the shepherd is the one who cares for the sheep, right? He loves them. He, he sacrifices for them. He cares about what they're doing. And here's the interesting thing. The, the shepherds were kind of considered outcasts. If you can imagine, you're carrying sheep. You're around them all the time. You're out in the wilderness. You're kind of a, maybe possibly a stinky person. Um, kind of, always kind of the job for the lowest of the family members. Um, and, and, and certainly the one who, with the least amount of honor, would be the one out with the sheep. So, um, so Jesus is changing that around to say, you know what, um, this is your idea of what a shepherd is, and I'm giving you a new idea of what a shepherd is. So it's the one who, who loves the sheep, who cares for the sheep, whose voice is known to the sheep, and who comes in the right way. Um, so you contrast that then with the, with the thief. The thief only wants to use them for profit or for power. They're unknown to the sheep. The sheep scatter, right? He goes after one sheep that he can find as a thief, uh, but, but uh, and the rest scatter. Jesus uh, is, we, we hear Jesus saying in uh, Matthew chapter 18 that he's, the, he's a shepherd who goes and finds the one that's lost, right? He's the one who goes and finds the lost sheep and brings them back as opposed to the one that scatters the flock and comes in and scares them and spreads them out as they're stealing or, or doing whatever they want. Um, Psalm 23, we know that one. The, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Um, speaks about taking them to green pastures, a place where they can lie down, a place where they can find water. Um, this is what a good shepherd does when he's caring for them. Um, and then Matthew 9, I referenced this earlier, Matthew 9 is a passage where he says that he looks over the crowds and he just has compassion on them because he sees them as sheep with no shepherd. No one who's set aside as their leader. No way to hear God's voice. They're just lost. And so he has compassion on them and, and begins to care for them and teach them. And eventually um, he'll feed that group um, miraculously. Um, so another aspect that we have, so we have the aspect of, of the shepherd that's in this passage, but then he also goes through and he kind of says, it says that the people didn't understand, right? And I love it when Scripture tells us this, but he explained this parable to them, and, and then it said the people didn't understand, so he, he tried again. And he gave them another one, right? And this time he doesn't necessarily call himself the shepherd, but he says that he is the gate. He's the gate to get in. So he kind of brings that into a little bit of a different um, aspect here. And again, he's speaking more about leadership as opposed to just kind of some random group of people 
um, to the sheep. He's speaking about the leaders, and he says, um, the teaching of Jesus as the gate is one of care and judgment. So it's one of care and judgment where he, um, he speaks about how uh, the sheep should be cared for, judgment upon those who aren't caring for the sheep. But then he, he highlights two things. So there's a warning in there. Um, uh, if people follow us and if we're leading people, there's a warning that we need to do that well. We need to be the one who Jesus is going to let in the gate and not sneaking in the side, but the one who, who comes to steal and destroy is the one who comes in the side. So we have to come in through the gate. And also he says, uh, this is an invitation. Do you want in? If you want into what God is doing, if you want to be a part of this kingdom, if you want to be a part of the fellowship of believers, you have to come in through the gate. You can't sneak in some other way, right? And don't we try to do this? Okay, well, I know that I'm told I need to have a relationship with Christ. That's how I get into heaven, right? I have to have a relationship with Christ. If I want to be a member of the kingdom of heaven here and now, relationship with Christ. But that's so hard. It's so hard to have a relationship with Christ because you have to, like, pray and, and, and that gets in the way of me watching my stories. And I have to, I have to read my Bible again, stories. And, and, and I'm a busy person, and I have my hobbies and my things that I do. And, and I guess I can make it to church, and maybe I can do this. But man, that's so hard. Wouldn't it be easy if, if there was just like a way where I could like hop the side of the fence? Um, reminds me of, of, of being a kid, and we used to play in, in my friend's uh, backyard all the time. We used to play football. I got bloody noses and, and, and black eyes all the time over at this house as all the neighborhood, neighborhood kids would come over there and play football. And the ball would go over the fence. And, and uh, as we were climbing over the fence one day to get it, this one kid bent, uh, kind of bent his knees like you do when you're getting ready to spring off. And as he pushed, the board broke. And now this fence, I don't know if you've ever seen this, this is a kind of fence where uh, they're not up and down. Uh, the, the boards actually go side to side, and they're kind of um, make really for really easy climbing because they go from like front to back and then front to back. And so you have a really good ladder on the fence. And so as he was doing that, that board broke off probably from being climbed over a hundred different times, and he broke his collarbone. So then I remember that boy's dad, uh, the boy who, not the boy who broke his, his collarbone, the boy who always had all the kids over, he went to the neighbor and said, would you mind... Would you mind if I built a fence, uh, a gate? I'm sorry. Would you mind if I built a gate back here? This way, these boys, I promise we won't go in there, but the ball is always in your backyard. If we had a gate, these boys wouldn't have to climb. They wouldn't have to sneak in. They could come in through the gate, grab their ball, and leave. And the neighbor said, you know what? That's a really good idea. There's something about coming in the right way. There's something about going through the gate that we're meant to go through. And, and I, I want to say any way we come to Jesus is the right way. That's, that's the truth. But any way that you come, whether you're, you're, your life is in shambles and you're struggling, you just call out and say, Lord, I need your help. Whether you're, you, you mistakenly think that Jesus is like um, super, some superhero that can fix all your problems or Santa Claus that can give you everything that you need. If those are the mistaking, I, mistaken ideas that you have and that brings you to Jesus, who cares? Because you came to Jesus, whether you had to kick, fight, maybe not kick and fight, but we had to, to climb or crawl or sneak in the door, that's fine. The idea is, the idea that we want to not be doing the sneaking uh, for is that what does it mean now to be a follower of Christ? What does it mean to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven? What does it mean um, to be following and, and leading and guiding, or following the leading and guiding of my Savior? We don't want to be sneaking in at that point and just kind of saying, maybe if I write a bigger check, Maybe if I do this thing, maybe if I check this off my list, maybe then I'll, I will get in. No, you come in through the gate. And right now I know we're automatically thinking, well, I'm not the pastor. So if this is about shepherds, it's just about the pastors. Well, I think that there might be an, uh, a special word in here for pastors. Be careful about what we're doing and how we're leading. And if everyone at your church is, is failing the test, uh, then maybe you're not doing a good job as a pastor. Maybe that's true. Um, maybe there's, there's that word to us, but, but it really is easy just to say, okay, I'm not the shepherd of this group. Um, I don't have the influence here, so I'm not, uh, I'm not held accountable by the scripture. So, so then, who then would be? Uh, were Sunday school teachers? 
Would they be on that list of, of shepherds? Or maybe board members. Oh, yeah, board members are part of the shepherds, so we know that we can at least hold them. They can at least read from this and get something of it from it because they're, they're on the board. And Well, may, maybe small group leaders or... I don't know, maybe, maybe if you welcome people, if you're a greeter, or maybe if you, if you work with the children or the teens some, and, and before long you start to realize we're starting to name nearly every person here, oh man, the praise team, right? Maybe if you're on the praise team, you, okay, you're a shepherd if you're on the praise team, uh, but certainly not anyone else. No, the truth is everybody in this church has a job to do. They have an a, a influence in some way over somebody else. So the question is, are you being a good shepherd? Yes, we want to understand that Christ is our shepherd. He's the one who's leading us and guiding us. We're, the, we're supposed to be listening to his voice, and he's the one who comes in the right way through the gate. And he encourages us also to make sure we go through the gate. There will be the ones allowed in. But if we make this something that's just about leaders, and we forget the fact that we have families that we're in charge of, we have responsibilities at work or at school or in the community, in the neighborhood or different places that we're at where we're kind of the one in charge or at least one of the ones in charge or at least we have a, a significant influence where we're at. I was picking on teachers earlier. Teachers, man, you, you don't even have to take those kids to church. You get to be in charge of like, I don't know, 30 kids at a time for like six different periods of the day. That's amazing. What a responsibility. What a challenge. So although we might say that this text seems like it's more about shepherds than it is about sheep, the truth is we're all called to be shepherds in the kingdom of heaven. Have you ever stood out there, like in Matthew chapter 9, stood there and looked at somebody and said, man, I feel a burden for this person that they would know Jesus the way that I know Jesus? If you've ever done that, you, you might be a shepherd. Have you ever looked at somebody whose life was crashing down around them and thought, man, they sure need some help. They sure need some encouragement. If only, if only they had someone who could lead them and guide them, guess what? You, you might be a shepherd. Or you might be called to be a shepherd. I don't want us to make the mistake of trying to gatekeep and say, oh, okay, well, people have to come in the right way, so we want to keep people out. What Jesus is saying is, if you have to sneak in, <coughs> if you have to fight for power, if you have to convince people that they should follow you and lead you, you might be doing the wrong thing. But rather, if you're, if you're there caring for people, if you're there spending time with people and, and, and letting them get to know your voice, if you're coming to them with good intentions and, and going through that open gate and, and the, the possibilities and the situation that God creates that you can be a witness or a testimony or a help to someone, if you're doing that, people will, will follow your lead. So if you're in the church, you're a shepherd. You are a leader in the kingdom of heaven. We're all people who are um, on the way to being saved, as Paul puts it. We're people who are working out our faith and fear and trembling. And uh, I just realized I, I'm in my, the end of my conclusion. I have not called the worship team up. Would you guys <laughs> speedily make your way <laughs> to the stage? Sorry, I interrupted myself. Um, man, it's really easy for us to say this isn't about me. This is about understanding who Jesus is. That's true. We want to understand Jesus as the good shepherd. You could say, it's not about me. This is maybe for pastors or other leaders, and I'm not that person. You could say, maybe I just started coming to this church, or maybe my Christian journey is, is really short. We say, this isn't for me. No, the truth is, if you are in the church, if you're a follower of Christ, then you are eventually going to be a shepherd. Whether that shepherd is children, whether that shepherd is youth, whether that, shepherd, uh, whether that, that flock is children or youth, uh, which is an easy connection to make, um, or whether it's just someone who I need to encourage in my own congregation, or someone I need to witness to. The truth is, you're a shepherd if you're a member of the kingdom of heaven. So then who is my flock? Who is my flock? Yeah, sometimes the flock is the people here in the church. Well, really in the same way that Jesus came, he arrived, and he looked out over the people. He recognized, if I can see them, they're my sheep. 
So I wonder if you would go out and, and, and sit on your front porch and look at all the cars who drive by and all the people walking their dogs and f- struggling with their dogs and the ones with good dogs. And if you would look and see all the people that go by, the kids on their bikes and all this, and you say, these people are my sheep because I'm a shepherd in the same way that Christ was a shepherd. If you sit there at work and you look around you and, and see the people who come in and out of your business, place where you work or your, your workmates, uh, co-workers um, around you, and you'd say, man, these people are my sheep. In the same way that Christ has led me, I want to be a part of leading others. If you want to look out even of your family, your extended family, and I know that many of us have family members that we hope and pray that they'll come to know the Lord. Guess what? You're a shepherd. So let's be good shepherds. Let's model Christ when we do that. I just have one brief word of prayer I want to uh, go to as we stand then and go to our final song. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you love us and you care about us and that you lead us and you guide us and you, you teach us and you show us so many things. And if we would just listen to you, you would take us everywhere that we need to go. You would help us know where to go. Help us not to be stubborn as sheep can be or silly or mean or grumpy as they can be, but rather, Lord, just to follow you whenever you lead us and guide us. Lord, but we, even more so, we pray that you would help us to be people who look out and no matter who we see, we would say, those are my sheep. Not in some negative connotation that's easy to, to pass on, but rather in a way to say that I'm responsible for these folks. I might be the only Christian they get a chance to, to speak to today. I might be the only example of, of Christ that they come into contact with today. So as you invite us and as you warn us, Lord, you invite us to be shepherds and you, and you warn us to not come in the wrong way or to not do this in a way that's self-serving. We pray that we would respond to your call, that we would hear you first and that would make it simple for us and easy for us to pass your voice and your word on to others. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We thank you, God, this morning for our time together worshiping in your presence. Thank you for the hope you give us through Jesus' resurrection. Help us to be bolder in how we live our lives and in how we serve you. Give us faith that can move mountains so that we are ready whenever you need us to battle against the lies of the enemy we may encounter. Lord, please fill us with the wisdom and faith that only come from following you. And it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed.